Greetings, everybody. Damien here, aka Irish Trekkie, back with another Nerd Escape podcast. And I have my faithful companions with me, Linda and Chris. Linda, how are you today? Hi, I'm not too bad, Damien. How are you? Doing good, doing good. End of the week. Uh, it's been a long one. It's been a long one. And we're here to talk Trek. And Chris, you're with us as well. How are you today, my good sir? Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very well. I think, I think we should just go with our Borg definitions from now on. You're one a tree, I'm two a tree, and Linda's three a tree, so we don't get any confusions. That's a private joke before we started recording this. Uh, that's it. Yeah, exactly. It's probably our easier small, than names. Yeah. Yeah. A small little <laughs> collective of three. I like it. I like it. I like it. And you know what? That's a nice segue because we've got three topics that we're going to talk about today. We have, we're going to look back on an awesome initiative that, Linda, you did. Uh, very recently for a Trek Tuesday, and we're going to talk about the Pike series, and we're going to talk about our own pitches for uh, Star Trek shows, and uh, we'd love to hear your pitches as well. So do join in the conversation when you're listening to the podcast. So let's dive straight into it. Um, Trek Tuesday is uh, Linda. To put uh-huh. you on the spot, what's Trek Tuesday on Twitter? You know, I don't know where it came from or who came up with it, but it's brilliant. Every Tuesday, you can put on your Star Trek T-shirt or put on your little pin or your badge and take a selfie or whatever. And just mm. kind of wish your, your fellow Trekkies a happy, happy day. Um, and I just I never I'm never organized enough to do that. Now, a lot of my Twitter friends are on the ball every week. They probably get up in the morning and go, right, Trek Tuesday, what do I wear? I'm going to grab my this T-shirt, that T-shirt. You know, I just, I, I always remember on Wednesday, you know. So I just loved it so much. And I kind of was missing conventions so badly the last couple of weeks. Because it's been a while since we've all mm. been at conventions. Um, and I think the cruise was the last thing that people kind of went to. So... And you know me, I love dressing up and I love any chance to dress up. Um, and it has been hard for me to to actually, well, I haven't really had motivation to do it. And I haven't obviously no opportunity to go out and buy materials or anything. So I just thought, you know, wouldn't it be great to kind of do a home convention for everyone to join in as fans? Because a lot of the celebrities are doing it. So they're doing, you know, online panels and and mm-hmm. Zoom meetings and everything. And I just thought it wouldn't be it'd be great for the fans to kind of mirror that um and get their cosplay on and kind of just mingle, you know, just mingle on Twitter, do a little video or a little selfie and introduce yourself and talk about your costume. And I just came up with that. I call the Trek Tuesday Cosplay Con. Uh and it seems to have gone down well on Twitter and a lot of people enjoyed it and I'm delighted. Right. I think it went down very well because the response was absolutely fantastic. And you know what I mean? It was good crack. Just, I just, I, I kind of cheated. I just kind of like put on my uh, Captain Kirk top. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. And like kind of hit between two really enterprises. Fine. But uh, I think Damien stole the show with, uh, you know, Damien yeah. being the Irish, uh, Irish Trek god. I think Ben had fun taking the, the wee wee out of you. You know, it was your uh, yeah, god, god, god hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did even less than you, uh, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Green hand. It, 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 it was no, great. It was very successful. Yeah. Mm. And I, I think you said it well. I think a lot of us have been feeling this, that the, the, the day, the, the world we're living in at the moment, just that kind of uh, waking up and not yeah. feeling motivated. And yeah. I think it was really great because it, it was fun uh, to do. I know I, I did it kind of late in the evening, but it was kind of fun through it, like different time zones and stuff like that. And you're yeah. seeing different people coming on. So like there was great response from the Irish, the UK brigade in Europe in the morning. And America, America woke up, yeah. <laughs> Ex- exactly, mm. which which was nice to kind of like just, just see the, the, everybody in their uniforms and even flashbacks of cons, which even, you know what I mean? Which is great because you said we missed the cons, and I know uh, SFI Starfleet International are doing their virtual con at the moment, and I hope it's going well for them. I've just been busy this weekend, so wishing them all the best. But uh, yeah, it was it was brilliant, Linda. You did you did great, and I think a lot of us you know enjoyed. It. I think the Tuesday part probably came from Captain Harrison, wasn't it? 
Yeah. Oh, yes, I understand. Uh, Harry Man. Oh, yeah. Harry Man, yes. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll, we'll have it on Tuesday. So it's yeah. probably an Enterprise B party. Uh, you know, every Tuesday, let's don our best uniforms because we're getting something installed on the Enterprise B today. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> But no, like it, it was a great success and it was great to see so many submissions coming in and uh, you hashtagged it on Twitter. So anyone can go on Twitter and put in uh, the hashtag that you said there, Trek Tuesday. What was it? Um, Cosplay Con 2020. But if Cosplay you leave Con. out the 2020, some people were hashtagging like that. So just, yeah, Trek Tuesday yeah. Cosplay Con. Just go to my no, profile it's and scroll cool. all it's the way. It's cool. Down. And it's such a great way to celebrate the positivity. Yeah, yeah, no, it's cool. That's cool. Um, but yeah, it's it's again, we're living through those times and it's been a long time since there's a convention and a lot of them have been cancelled as well. So kind of lifting up people's spirits there. Um, I think uh never no idea is too small, no idea is too big. So um again, um reach out to the community. Uh people quilt, people cosplay, people draw, you name it. Um, people are contributing there. So that was awesome to see. Um and there was other great news as well. Uh, oh. We recently talked about Star Trek uh, rumors. I think and, we, only uh, just, we only just kind of just had done this. Kind of yeah. like, we kind of like the rumors. <laughs> yeah, and it came out. It, yes. it, it's been official. St- Strange New Worlds, um, episodic positivity uh, with uh, Anson at the helm. Um, thoughts, Chris, thoughts. Oh, it's look. now confirmed. Um <sighs> What else have you been thinking? Did, look, just with something like this, it's fantastic. But even the title is fantastic. And um, the fears, as always, when you hear leaked productions and stuff like that, we know in the past that normally they're code names for a series that's coming up. So it looks as though Strange New Worlds is going to stick with the show. And I just think it's absolutely perfect. I think as about, I think the whole cast of the Enterprise crew that we've seen so far have been absolutely brilliant in Discovery. I think Aston has just been, he's just so, oh, Pike, in every sense of the imagination. I'm really looking forward to the show. I just think it's, yes, it's another prequel. People can give out and so forth like that. But I think if they get the right and right, if they just do the stories, we're going back to episodic, which is exactly what Star Trek fans have been screaming out for such a long time. And, Look, TV is what it is. You know, the way Star Trek went with Discovery and Picard, that's TV now. And it's great to see CBS, All Access, kind of break the mold and say, no, let's go back to what Star Trek was. So we're getting episodic. I think there's so much that they can do. Like, we, like I've always said, gone on about the Tolians and all that. Like, there's so much there at that time. The Alpha, the Beta Quadrant has barely been touched. It is strange new worlds. It's exploring, which is absolutely fantastic. Maybe we might like. Is it going to be after discovery? Is it going to be before discovery? Who knows? Do I really care? Nope. Because it'll be interesting to see. Like, if, if, isn't if, it if after? It's... Yeah, I think it was confirmed that it was after. after. Yeah. yeah, but like leading up to when Pike jumps on discovery could have been fairly cool. But like, we're probably going to get up to the build up of uh, probably the handoff to to Kirk, which would be fairly fairly cool. A young. <laughs> William Shatner jumping on the bridge of the Enterprise to finish off. Will we go up to the, as far as seeing Pike have his tragic accident? Who knows? But like even like looking at some of the old classic TOS characters as well, like the Gorn can actually come into it. It's just that they can't actually see the Gorn. So kind of like the Romulans, you can't. They can't really have a skirmish with the Romulans, or they could, but they can't actually see the Romulans because we know that's mm-hmm. canon. But even with the Gorn, we know that what you call it when Kirk and uh, Spock uh, beamed down to the planet, they didn't actually know who attacked that starbase. It was the first time that they met the Gorn. But they didn't see the ship, and they only met the Gorn for the first time when Captain Kirk decided to take off his shirt and go uh, Hulk Hogan on a Gorn, uh, hiding <laughs> and throwing rocks <laughs> at him. So, you know, there's, there's lots for them to do. So I'm really, really, like, I think this is going to be epic. Yes. I agree. Epic, episodic. And Linda, um, following on from what Chris was saying there, what, what were your thoughts when they started kind of fleshing it out? What did you think of the video of Anson and uh, Rebecca and um, our, our good old little Spock? Oh, my God. Yeah, I freaked out. Freaked out. But I, I kind of calmly, <laughs> I, I calmly freaked out because I we all knew it was going to happen. We all just knew. Um, yeah. 
you know, they didn't build that set for, for a couple of episodes. And we got such, well, I know I, did, I haven't seen a short, a couple of short tracks I'm, I'm missing in my, uh, in my viewing, but, um, mm. so we only saw glimpses of that bridge really, you know, and God, it's amazing. It's just a, it's a gorgeous set and a gorgeous ship as well. Um, yeah, they, they just, they were always going to do it, I think. <laughs> well, wow. I think the, the fans did help, but, um, yeah, they I- always had a plan. I yeah. think you made great points there, Linda, but like say the set and the ship and it just goes to show that like I know a lot of people kind of like the old canon like it's like, oh, it has to look this way and it has to look that way. But at the same time, it just goes to show that like in this age, you can take a classic, you can update it and mm-hmm. still keep the heart of the original Enterprise design, the original bridge yeah. design, because yeah, th- there's differences. But like to me, it's just a beautiful set. It works. It screams TOS just, you know, in this day and age, which is, which is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And like that, like discovery is established now, you know, that's going to be going into season three. Um, and like, there's the Trek shorts, as you said, Linda as well. And we know the, the design aesthetic that's been established now. And, you know, there is going to be those types of people that will always kind of harp back, well, it has to look like this not going to happen anymore we know what it's like now and uh strange new worlds massive possibilities here and i'm thoroughly delighted because we talked about it um in the last one um it wouldn't it be refreshing if it was episodic uh, that you could just kind of go week to week and have an entire story there and uh see the crew uh like see spock you know be like he's he's a brand new fresh Uh, officer on the bridge of the enterprise so he's going to be learning and you know who's going to be you know security who's going to be medical and there's rumors uh fan rumors out there already of hopes and and wishes (laughs) as well so uh it's it's great it's great and um, for dr boyle yeah yeah we all want dr boyle yeah (laughs) mr we all want yes jeffrey combs i think would be perfect for this role um yeah. It'd be great to see him back in Star Trek as well. I yeah, think that's given the fans something back as well because he's done so much. He's been so many aliens, so many characters. He's yeah. a fan favorite, and I think mm-hmm. it's not just the fact that he, he's just a fan favorite. He's just a lovely bloke, and I think anyone that's gone to any con, uh, con and actually met him would never have a bad thing to say about him. I, I think mm-hmm. you know he deserves this. You know they've nothing to lose by casting him in this role. I think. Yeah. Totally. And he's, he's, a great, you know, he's a great actor. He's, he's I mean, Providence on Trek. Yeah. And Linda, you're, you're spot on. He is. He, on, he, Linda, he's, sorry, a I actor. Interrupted you. he's a great actor. <laughs> no, I was going to say, was it, even like, he'll have no makeup. So it's just another, it's like another, well, it is another character for him. Like, it's not like he's playing himself or anything. It's just, it's going to be a whole other character. And we probably wouldn't even recognize Shran or Wayun. You know, we would, he He's just that amazing, you know. Mm. I completely agree with you, Linda. I, like, it, it, it's going to be oh. really interesting to see where it goes with casting and so forth, like that. It's probably going to be a year or two down the line before we actually get mm. to see the first episode. But yeah, look, again, like I, 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 I did. We did a communal kind of uh, trek lad did this, you know, spontaneous three o'clock when it broke last weekend, and he was like, gonna like get a load of Trekkies on. What does everyone think? Like, should this be the family Star Trek? Should this be the old TOS, TNG, sit down together and watch Star Trek? What's your yes. opinions? Yeah, I guess so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, yeah. I think that seems to be what everyone thinks, because Discovery, there's nothing wrong with Discovery, you know what I mean? Let's have a broad horizon of Star Trek for everybody, but I think this is kind of this is the one that we kind of want to sit down with the the kids and kind of yeah, let's explore. Yes, I think so. And and that's what's a successful franchise, you know. Um, when you have this variety of shows, you're going to have a certain part of the fan base that will watch literally everything, read everything, consume everything, but then you're going to have fans that will be strictly animated or strictly discovery or picard or pike um so it's great that there's going to be something for everybody and just this kind of again going way back when when they started talking about the star trek universe 
um it's 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 been padded out very very well and uh i think the name as you said earlier strange new worlds again there's plenty of planets out there uh in the alpha quadrant that uh can be discovered and um it'd be interesting to see some old familiars but potentially some new species um coming into the mix as well that are um uh, just again like aliens of the week way back when um in tos and tng and so on and so forth so it's gonna be awesome someone mentioned it on a, a, a on a cast uh, like the tellerites and you know what i would love to see a tellerite crew <laughs> <laughs> i just think it could be so much humor because you just yeah. meant to insult them yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean it's you know yeah. what i mean i think it's one of like even as the transporter chief <laughs> you know what I mean? Walking oh, yeah. in the transporter room. And actually, with Captain Pike, I think it would be perfect. <laughs> you know what I mean? How are you today? Rah, 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 rah. Well, back <laughs> off, you two. Beam us down now. Yeah. <laughs> <It'd> be... <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be a great bit of humor, wouldn't it? Yeah. A nice break, a small role, but you know what I mean? O'Brien did it so well in TNG. But just think, you know, just that yeah, transporter chief, I think, absolutely. I think it'd be fantastic because we never really touched on them you know we know their argument they love insults and i just think it could be a good icebreaker um yeah and i could could be a a big fan favorite as well i actually think could be really really fun or even the barman (laughs) Barman. (laughs) i love it i love it i love it here geez maybe there's some writers listening to this right now you never know (laughs) if you're on a ship and captain pike is bursting your balls and you need to unwind, go to your officer's deck, have your drink, and insult your barman. It's perfect. It's <laughs> therapeutic. Well, that's what Dr. Boyce is going to be as well, though, don't forget. <laughs> oh, yeah. True. Well, yeah, True. Yeah, yeah. well, he carries around his own little martinis anyway, so that's you know, <laughs> not a sick way for a sneaky drink. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. And like we, we were we were talking about, you know, what the show could be um, in the previous episode as well. But I give you guys homework as well that uh, before we caught up, uh, I pitched the idea of uh, let's put our thinking caps on and uh, come up with the show uh, that we can pitch each other and uh, see if it sticks as well. And that's that's no easy task. And um, there's 50 years of trek. Um, sometimes things can be repeated uh, and very successfully. And uh, sometimes uh, you can really think outside of the box. So um, let's start pitching our ideas here for uh, our own Trek shows. And uh, again, as I say, everyone at home listening, um, let us know what your pitches are. Uh, comment on the YouTube video or Twitter. You name us, just find us. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what your ideas are. Um, so uh, because it was my idea, I'm not going first. So <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mole. Uh, Chris, I, I'm going oh, to pick okay. you to lead us on your pitch okay, for just... any Star Trek show. And to let people know at home, it can be off a brand new idea. Uh, you could revisit a storyline that was done before. It can be in any era as well. That was the kind of brief that we gave each other. So uh, fire away, Chris. Okay, so this sounded easy. <laughs> and then when you started thinking it, it's really really hard but uh, my idea between going jump through movies between looking at the whole can story was actually kind of what um was initially planned for discovery as in that like discovery season one was going to be in that time period it was going to switch period so my idea would be one two three four five six seven i didn't include tas so you could possibly have eight episodes but seven episodes per season and basically what it does is it goes back to all our beloved Star Trek franchises and takes something from preferably season one and expands. So it's maybe an hour, an hour and a half episode. So say like the likes of Enterprise, we go back and revisit the Terra Nova story. As in, how did the people in Terra Nova get there, their final moments when they crashed, what happened, so forth like that. Then you could jump to... The next episode will be a TOS style episode. So you could have how this, uh, the Guardian of Forever came about or else I was thinking more. Yeah, the Guardian of Forever would be a good one. Like, you know, the background story behind the Guardian of Forever for Discovery. Um, we could do the Glen. So maybe the final moments of the Glen, um, you know, a little bit of, mm. you know, but like you're going back, you're recovering. You got TNG in there. And I was thinking for the first one, 
a really interesting character and a fan favourite that we never really got to know too much about, the Traveller. We could look at the Traveller. Um, Then we got Mm. to D D Space Nine, another fan favourite, and I think it would be very appropriate for him, would be Odo's backstory when he was found, um, what he went through in the lab and why he hated, uh, what was his name, Professor, oh, gone, mind blank. Uh, with Voyager, uh, the episode Jetrel, um, basically the Metreon cascade with Neelix's planet. So just, you know, you could have the war scenario when they release the Metreon cascade, which would be very, very cool. And then even Star Trek Picard, the final moments of that Borg cube. Mm. So you could kind of do this in between seasons or it could just be, you know, kind of like mini movies that just drop in between, say, before the next episode of Discovery or before the next series of Picard or something like that. But, you know, just kind of like a flashback series. And then if they wanted to expand, you could go into season two, pick out a story and build back. So like a little bit of a flashback scene. That's that's kind of something that I was thinking of. It's pretty cool. That was like uh... left field. Yeah. Awesome. It's kind of like uh, what short tricks do, but it would be cool to be yeah. to revisit the old shows and have a, like a movie length. It's kind of like a TV movie. Exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, you're, you're revisiting all the franchises previous, which would be really, really cool, I think. So they don't have to be in a particular order, but like, you know, go back. Let's look at what's been there before. Pick a storyline, mm-hmm. which was cool, that you never really got too much information of, and make mm-hmm. a mini movie of it. And, you know, it doesn't have to have a complete ending. It doesn't have... It's just one of those that you just get a little bit of background information from an episode. And you go, oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, you know what? I'm going to watch that episode of Enterprise now and watch the episode Terra Nova. Ooh, mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah, cool. so that, that was my little plan. Nice one. Nice yeah. one. Okay, okay, you, okay. I like it. I like it. Linda, what, 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 what did you come up with? Right. So... Um, okay, <laughs> everyone has been saying that Seven should get her own spin-off um, because she was so cool in Picard, you know, Star Trek Fenris Rangers. Everyone was kind of mm. hoping to follow her and her adventures. So mm-hmm. I would love that. But mm. she she has no ship. Picard blew up, or, well, Picard lost the ship on her. So um, she could either salvage the Borg cube that's I don't know where it is crashed on that planet or I would kind of prefer if she was kind of like a space pirate that she went around salvaging different ships and get grabbing parts from like old ship graveyards from whatever battles you know that have just been lying around um but who would be on her who would be on her crew you ask Mm. well (laughs) here's where it gets cool Right, I did lots and lots of research here, so I have figured out the ages of the various Star Trek kids. Mm-hmm. So, and it would be cool oh. if she could kind of they, they all kind of assemble from different storylines. They don't necessarily know each other. Um, so we have Molly O'Brien and Kiriyoshi. So they would be guess what? Guess how old Molly is? In this in this year, I figured it all out right. Monday would be about thirty, would she? She's thirty one. Thirty one. Oh, oh my god. god! What do I win? <laughs> <laughs> and her little brother's her little brother's twenty six. He's not a baby anymore. Uh, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> I know. Um, Naomi Wildman. Obviously, she has to be Seven's first officer. She's twenty seven. Hmm. Um, see alexander's floating around there in a klingon ship somewhere he's 33 in human years but klingons mature faster don't they so you know he's 33 years but he's yeah. obviously like a an established commander or whatever uh, are, you, are, are you sure no, no. <laughs> well, yeah no come on it's 20 years later he's got his he's got his, his stuff together now and he he's, he's sensible well, he's sensible well, now. his clutziness and his <laughs> You know, his stupidity brought luck onto the Klingon ship. So, you know what I mean? He was oh, yeah. he was a vital member of the crew because yeah. they found him lucky. Um, and I'll, and then Tom and Bellana's kids, Morale, she would be 21 in human years. But we did, in Endgame, we did see her serving in Starfleet. 
So yeah. I would like to yeah. see that that was obviously a different timeline. But I would like her to be a star, you know, Starfleet, proper Starfleet officer that Seven and her crew could call upon for favours. Mm. Um, the only other kid that I would love to see in this would be uh, Kestra, Troy and Riker's daughter. Mm. Now she, she was cool. She's kind of, I, I don't know what age she was supposed to be. The actress, I think, is 15. So I think 12 or two. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's hard to say. Yeah, if it's. Mm. I I have her at fourteen question marks. Mm. So, okay. <laughs> um, mm. but I I think it would be cool if now maybe for the pilot or maybe it could be an ongoing thing that Kestra has gone has run away from home, and yeah, uh, Troy and Riker get seven call seven to come and go and find her somewhere with her kids or well, they're not kids but yeah. the star the star trek kids so yeah there you go star trek fenris rangers vigilante Ooh, i like um, I'm just, just yeah. with, with the name kestra i'm trying to remember was uh, this hit me before with picard and I, I i never actually i was meant to actually look this one up was kestra's troy's mm-hmm. sister that died that loxana blocked out yes, yes exactly yeah, that's yeah yeah that, mm, penny dropped yeah I, I recognized the name from Picard and went, mm, that links in with something. I know, I know, I know uh, their son linked in with in an episode of Voyager. So, uh, yeah. Easter egg. Awesome. Yeah. I like that, Linda. That's, That's a really good idea. Um, if they did salvage that board cube, they could theoretically drop a load of transwarp conduits and go wherever they want and wherever time they want. And it could end up like mm-hmm. a kind of a quantum leap thing where they time and do missions and stuff. But... Uh, and then Rafi would obviously have to be in it because they kind of set that relationship up at the end there. So she'd be a she's a cool character. I like Rafi, yeah, yeah, like seven, Rafi, yeah. yeah. Rafi grew yeah. on me quite a yeah. lot in Picard. I think she had a very, very good character development in Picard. Yeah, yeah. And the only yeah. other character then, Narissa, we never saw a body, so I would like to think <laughs> she could be a recurring bad guy as well. So. Ooh, <laughs> nice. I like that. <laughs> Sold. Did did <laughs> Narek redeem himself? Did he? Is he not? Is he not bad anymore? I think Narek is always going to be Narek. I think he's always yeah. going to. Uh, he's going to put what's right uh, for Romulans. Yeah. He's one of them that'll sit on the fence. He uh, yeah. he 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 seems to me like one of these guys that just he won't make anyone an enemy unless he has to. He you know what I mean? He'd rather just. Play air on the side of caution because you know if you don't kind of peeve everyone off, you never know when you might need their help, as we've seen in the last episode of the card. So, yeah, I think so too. Yeah, okay. yeah, I, I, I like that one. That's a really good idea, Linda. Yeah, I like mm-hmm. it. That's very mm-hmm. original. Uh, um, Star Trek kids, <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> and then it would kind of bring Star all Trek the series kids. together. You know, it would be it'd be cool. Yeah. Kind of. So you're 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 kind of you were kind of going on the same kind of background yeah. thing that I was going on, you know, let's 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 try and reemerge all these franchises as yeah. best we can. And you went down the kid route, which is deadly. I know. And like, well, who there would know each other? Like Naomi Wildman and Morale, they would know each other. Morale to- uh Paris. Mm. Um Molly mm-hmm. and Ryoshi, I think uh I don't know, for some reason in my head now the O'Briens have split up and uh <laughs> while, <laughs> while No way is, Miles is teaching in the academy. Um, Keiko is doing some kind of botany thing on Bajor, and they've been doing the same thing for 20 years, and I just think they've drifted apart. <laughs> Keiko, Keiko is Aww. now married to Julian Bashir. <laughs> oh, God. Ouch. What happened to Esri? <laughs> oh, dear. Well, oh, she went off <laughs> commanding her own ship. What happened to Port Jacote? That's what I want to know. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. That could be yeah. a, that could be a Star Trek series in itself. The Chakotay yeah. Journal. Chakotay, my spirit guide. <laughs> right. Um, saving the best for last. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> Damien, you no. you you, uh, you were the one that actually gave us this challenge. So I reckon that you had something in the back burner for a long time, and you wanted to let this out. No, there. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I, I'm all right for ideas, but uh, execution maybe not. Um, okay. Uh, right. So. I, I've said many a times um, there's been these massive story drops in Trek that 
are just for the, the, the episode of the week and then they're forgotten. Like how an ancient race seeded all of the races in the Alpha Quadrant yeah. uh, because there was no life. And then it's like, next week, uh, Picard learns the whistle. Um, and uh, <laughs> like dinosaurs evolved on uh, Earth before humans. And uh, boom, that, that's gone as well. So I was, I was looking through. Time. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I was, I was, I was looking through different uh, like stories, going, that you know, that would make a cool one. And then I was kind of going, maybe like we should have like Star Trek Threshold to find out what happened to like, the salamanders um, <laughs> that were left behind in the Delta Quadrant That's and, and see what happened show. to Jane. There you funny. go. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot about them, Linda. Uh, but yeah, yeah, the salamander Trek, you know. Uh, um, but then I, I was kind of mulling around. I went on a different vibe than you, uh, ye, ye, ye folks, which I think is cool because it just shows the kind of uh, variety that you can do with Trek. And um, I was kind of thinking, wouldn't it be cool to have like Star Trek, like a uh, crappy name for a show, but like Star Trek Colony, where you're, uh, the, the show is based on a new colony that's being set up on the frontier. So you're not actually, the core of it is not Starfleet at all, but they're there. Um, so you're looking at, you know, the people who are traveling from wherever to then create this colony, you're going to have your, um, indigenous, you know, aliens around the place going off and, you know, new discoveries and stuff. And it could kind of almost be a little bit like behind the scenes of Starfleet, more on society and politics and maybe criminality and opportunities like Harry Mudd and stuff like that. Um, as well as how Starfleet show a presence on new colonies because i thought like the maquis were handled really awesomely in mm. discovery and i was like i'd love to know more about that and it could be an interesting take to see what star trek uh or, or what starfleet and the federation do to colonies because maybe it's not all good maybe um maybe there is a little bit of an undertide like what you can see on um the expanse where you know, there there can be kind of separation and and stuff like that as well, and uh, I just thought it'd be kind of something cool to explore because we've had the crews, we've had the starships, we've had space stations, um, we've gone where no one's gone before, and um, I just thought it may be cool to have a look at um, this kind of aspect. So, like Linda, you know, you could be looking at kind of family dynamics, different works, uh, different uh, areas uh, within the modern society as well as you know um how uh like what's this what's the cargo coming what's the starship that's in route that can come to the rescue and stuff like that and uh maybe there's cadets or a little like department of federation officers on the planet maybe a new booth be and stuff like that you never know but um that's what i was kind of thinking uh that i'd like to kind of flesh out a little bit more but um, something something colony based, just for a bit of a change to see what they could do with it. But many many writers out there maybe could make that a, a go. But that was my idea. Um, cool. Not as good as yours, but uh, uh, you know, you never know. You never know. I, I, I have always wanted a, a like a civilian yeah. side of the story, and Starfleet are just there. So I've always actually thought of that as well. Yeah, you could like, literally like have a Federation outpost there with the colony so forth like that's so how you have a small little academy so forth like yeah. that and yeah you can see the backgrounds between civilians starfleet federation all working together which yeah be, yeah, yeah be, maybe it's because it yeah, yeah cause it. like there was one that i was looking at and i think was it gary um oh can't think trek Bryce, i think asked the question before like you know uh about myers looking at doing the can storyline and that was kind of like going back to earth which would be something that like a lot of fans now just kind of like the response mm. is really really negative but i would love something that's just like yeah it's based in 1995 yeah okay we're going backwards but i just mm. think it's a drama it's it, like it's going to finish up with him going on the botany bay with his 50 odd mm. super humans but like just the whole the creation of him um mm. You know how him and eugenics wars. Yeah, have the eugenics wars play out. How him and four or five other guys take over the planet and the rebellion. Yeah, and have it a real drama. But it just doesn't seem to sit with people. You know, I think yeah. it would be really good. You could even throw in a sung 
you know what I mean? Which would be priceless. It'd be like a song that decided, you know, oh yeah, I, I created Can. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's he's the yeah. professor behind it, you know what I mean? And all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, oopsie. <laughs> we made a mistake. See, that, that would be cool. Like when you look at shows like uh, Man in the High Castle or um, For All Mankind, where it's this all uh, alternate reality. Um, going back to the 60s or the 50s, you could easily do that in the 90s, where mm. it was not, it wasn't our 90s. Yeah, um, like Han came from, um, like wasn't he like Indian royalty or or something? No, he was he was uh, basically a, a lab baby, and yeah, he, well, his parents were probably Indian origin, yeah. but like the, the, the whole story cool. with him is, yeah, you know, I mean, I think it was there was there was seven of them or six that controlled the whole earth. Basically, so it would be it, it's drama. It's not it, okay, it's it. science fiction. It's set, but it's it's drama. It's just you know there's not yeah. going to be no starships. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we're just going to basically except the one at the end. <laughs> yeah, well, you're going to see the early exploration of space, obviously. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it, it it's it's kind of on your way of thinking as well. Like Damien, it's it, it's an interesting one. I like it. You know, it, it, I know Star Trek is always starships and stuff like that, which is great, but yeah, you kind of like hmm, something dramatized to be mm. cool as well. Mm. There you go. Now, I love how we've had three different ideas. I, I like that. And I can guarantee you there'll be so many other ideas that are completely left field. That'll be awesome um, yeah. if, 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 if you share them as well. And um, what I like about the way TV has gone now, like with Picard, you know, it, a show doesn't have to be seven seasons long. I I would love if it was seven seasons long, but you can do these short run, three season ones or short treks or as you say, like mini movies. The production value is there now that you could tell a story to add into an up and coming series. So uh, like that, like the eugenics war spin off, revisiting something in TOS or TNG. Yeah, it's it's kind of you, kids. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're sp- it's it's like the Star Wars model, like, you know what I mean? If you do look at Star Wars, you know we've had the nine movies now, but like the Mandalorian, mm-hmm. uh, the Mandalorian, you know it's yeah. it's brilliant. It's 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 in that universe and it's going off doing its own thing, which yeah. is pretty yeah. damn cool. And definitely with Star Trek universe, I t- just think there's so much dream out there. There's there's so much coolness, but I, I, I like. I, I like the idea of revisiting all the franchises in some ways. So, like, I kind of, like, have a soft spot for Linda's idea. You know what I mean? Just, you know, yeah. just tying in all the loose pieces. You know, maybe yeah. T'Pol had like, a that's what child, and you can add her to her, to Paul's child to your crew as well. Like, I'd love a... I'd love, sh- I'd love short treks to do other... Like, I'd love to... I'd watch a short trek of just Harry and Tom... Oh, older yeah. <laughs> just meeting up meeting up and doing a captain proton just oh, for one episode yeah you know much, like uh, if you're doing that you have to do o'brien and bashir as well <laughs> oh, yeah. like you could do just yeah. the, the, just one episode half an hour long and then next week you're you're, you're doing tng you're 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 gone to like um what Mott did after uh, the Enterprise D. Uh, where did he set up uh, his uh, his hair salons? You know, just it, it, there's so much opportunity now that we it could go crazy like that. And I wish it did. I, I wish it would just kind of go a little bit nuts and do these kind of one off things. Um, yeah, and ex- uh, get really, really focused. Down. Yeah. Bring some of the older cast and crew back into even the Trek shorts would work great. Like I like that idea now. You know, <laughs> with with it, Tom and. Uh, Harry, as I said, O'Brien, Bashir, like there's been always that kind of unique um, duos with, with characters in the past. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I, I know uh, Brent doesn't want to do Data anymore, but like even like a short trek with like Geordie and Data would be, you know, again, there's yeah. two good friends as well, which would be really, really cool and fun to play off. So you could even have like a 10 minute trek short of, you know, Admiral Janeway just giving Harry his pips. You know, <laughs> could you imagine how like that would go down in the community? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, he's actually promoted. <laughs> you know, um, it'd be so cool. It'd be very cool. But uh, yeah, we'd love to hear what your ideas are. So uh, get your thinking caps on and uh, pitch what you'd like to see, be it a short track, be it a movie, be it a series, um, novelization, whatever you'd like to do. Um, but yeah, listen, 
Linda, Chris, thanks for sharing. That was awesome. It's gotten my grey matter twirling. <laughs> <laughs> Groovy. Um, so, <laughs> Chris, you're good at giving people homework uh, that are listening Ooh. to the show. Have, have you any challenges for the listenership? No, I think I think I yeah. think you've done it. Like any ideas? What what do people what do people want to? seeing this star trek universe now that we've like we have got a lot of shows coming up now at the moment so it's kind of like can't see them doing too many more at the moment but yeah let, let's leave it at what's people's ideas for a star trek show what would they like to cool. see or star trek cool. spin-offs i think awesome. would be the brilliant call to arms unless linda has something to throw well, in there well, if it'd be cool to kind of think how they could link all the current shows you know like maybe a storyline or a series that would link everything including lower decks and the anime the other animated show and Ooh. everything mm. cool. yeah mm. that'd be interesting, that'd the, be interesting. The, the interesting thing is like the 60th is a few years away love to see them get their thinking caps yeah. on for that one and as you said there linda get all of them involved we've seen it done before now with the bbc and doctor who they've pulled it off they've pulled it off well with all the doctors in little, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Do you remember that short trek with the tardigrade? Uh, remember that one that they were pitching? Oh, um, yes. What was it, Ephraim? And he was kind of jumping from ship to ship. It'd be, it, you know, something kind of like that where one thing is connecting them all and uh, yeah. kind of expand upon that idea. That'd, that'd be awesome for the 60th, yeah. Mm. That'd be cool. If, like, you know, it, it's just reusing, like we've seen it done with the Space Nine uh, Trials and Tribulations. You know, it was done so well. Yeah. You know what I mean? With uh, Bashir and uh, O'Brien, <laughs> you know, who started the fight. Yeah. <laughs> the two whales lining up. Mm. <laughs> Brilliant. I love you know? it. I love and, it. And, and that was that, that was done in the, the 90s. So, you know what I mean? Like, the technology's evolved so much, you know. Let's go back, you know, key all the, uh, key all the franchises. And do something big for the 60s. You know, like, we've got these shows. There's definitely going to be Star Trek on TV for the 60th and I just really hope that the powers that be have that in mind and have a sp- special either feature movie blah, I don't know but something really really cool because you only really need to ground maybe one or two characters into it be it like as as Linda said like if it's current crew like say from Discovery or Picard it could easily be done yeah yeah Do it. yeah Make it that's hope. it Make it so exactly, and on that bombshell, I think we'll wrap it up there for today's episode. Um, that was a fun chat. I like that. Um, so if you liked our fun chats, be sure to subscribe to this podcast and uh, stay tuned for up and coming episodes. Segue, and um, yeah, I, I got, I got to, I got to wrap it up there, uh, and uh, I'm going to say my usual. It's goodbye from me, and I'll pass the mic over to Linda and Chris. Slanga uh, fall and Ihoa from me. Um. Yeah. Good night, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Cool. Awesome. Sweet. Uh... <laughs>